Good morning, YouTube. Today, we're gonna to be doing flash photography with the Canon R5. Let's go. Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel, and um, you're in for a treat for this one. Got the new Canon R5 that I've got from a works camera. Got the 35mm RF. Um, 1.8 got three flashes linked up to the commander I'm basically going to be taking pictures of uh, my bike because I'm going to be selling it or swapping it um, depends that who whoever wants it whatever um, so after that once I've done the, the R5 um, I'm going to be using the uh, EF 100 to 400 um, and do some compressed shots using these trees that we've used before in previous videos. Um, the 35mm, because it's quite wide, I'm gonna be used for close-up shots because of the environment that we're in at the moment. If, um, if I do environmental style shots with the 35mm and get nice and wide, um, all the flashes are in the frame. Um, and it's, it's not ideal. If I was in a massive forest and we weren't in lockdown, then um, they would probably look pretty sweet because I can isolate the subject using the flash exposure and um, crank the shutter speed right down to get the ambient nice and moody and get some environmental style shots. But therefore, I might do that if I get the new bike. Um, but um, for today, because they're, they're selling shots and not feature magazine style shots. Today is all about exposing it um, and getting all the details in there. Um, we'll go through that in a video. Um, so without further ado, let's get on it. Okay, so I've swapped the cameras off of the tripod. So I've got the R5 on in now and I'm now holding my Sony obviously to film. Look at that autofocus, good. So yeah, as I said before, got the new R5 looking good with the 35mm uh, RF lens. Um, got the ST3, I think it's called, uh, STE3. Um, what do you call it? Commander, let's try and get in there. There we go. Okay, there you go. You can see on there, maybe you can see on there. I hope you can see on there. I can't see because I haven't got a flip out screen. That's one good thing about the R5. Just gonna put that out there. Nice flip out screen. Uh, I wish my Sony had a flip out screen. Hopefully when the new, uh, what do you call it? A7 IV, I might trade this in and get that. But anyway, that's a different video. So today I've got three cameras, got the key light there with the wide angle diffuser. And the reason why I've got the wide angle diffuser on there is so that it, it lights the floor. Um, I've got the B uh, channel uh, kicker light, if you want to call it that. And then over there, I've got the um, rear light. They're all on separate channels. So I've got that on channel A, that on channel B, and that one on channel C. And the reason why I've done that is so that, let's try and, let's try and turn me around. The reason why I've done that is um, so that I can control them independently, like my Godox flashes, can control them independently with the uh, ST3 Commander. Okay, so what I've got here, if I turn you around, this little flash here um, is the rear light. So kind of how I did uh, a portrait the other day. Um, I think I put it on this video, I'm not sure, but if I didn't, here's a picture use the backlit flash right at the back to emphasize anything within the atmosphere. What I mean by that, if there's any dust, flies, um, it also has a nice rim light on the trees, that sort of good stuff. But it's not really exposing the bike very much, not from all the way back there anyway with the little speed light. Um, excuse me. I had a rubbish night's sleep last night. It's not really exposing the bike. If it does add a little shine, that's pretty sweet, adds a little shine. But um, the, the main backlit flash that I'm gonna be using is this one here, the 
the kicker light, if you want to call it that. It's a bit different um, than doing a portrait because um, the bike is a bit more a bit more 2D than it than a face that's 3D with portraits and stuff like that. So that really is just going to emphasise some of the stuff at the back. Um, and then, as I said here, the main key light with the wide angle diffuser is going to expose the bike. Um, and for your reference, what I've got the exposures on, um, that's on one to one, so pretty much full power. The one at the back is on one to one um, to try and flick up as much as you can. And that one's just on uh, a quarter power. The reason why that's lower is because I just want to emphasize um, some of the curb curves down here, but I don't want the whole scene to be one single exposure. Uh, that's all right all the way back there, one to one, because it's miles away and all that light's not necessarily going to get here. Um, that one, I don't want to be the same as the main key light uh, because it would just be, it wouldn't be flat lighting, but you might as well just use ambient lighting if that's the case. Um, and my settings I've got are going to be, uh, so I've got manual white balance because I don't want auto white balance kicking in, 200 ISO, 1.8. Um, f-stop uh, aperture and 1250 of shutter speed it's fairly bright today weirdly um, and the sun's the sun's literally there um, and what I was going to say 200 ISO the reason why I got on 200 ISO is because although my um, uh, what do you call it key light is at one-to-one -one power it's still not that powerful, even from quite this close. Um, because I'm trying to fight um, the bright daylight um, and that diffuser takes out some of the, some of the power. Um, I've added an extra stop of ISO and then I've just um, decreased the ambient by bumping that the shutter speed up by one stop as well so yeah that's pretty much the setup so what we're going to do now is start taking some photos and then uh i'll let you know what's going down catch you in a bit detailed shots first with the 35 mil and then i will take um the longer shots with the 100 to 400 okay so what i'm going to be doing is going to be emphasizing some of the features on the bike like the pedals um, the Fox float, um, the Hope uh, wheel set, and basically anything that's going to be a selling point. Obviously, I'll take pictures of that. So, without further ado, I'll get on that. Okay, so now that I've taken a couple of the uh, detailed shots, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the 100 to 400 on it, let you have a look at that, and then we're going to do some um, establishing shots, basically the the shots that the opening shots that the the viewer is going to want to see, the classified shots, like with a car photography stuff um, on uh, classified ad, ads or whatever. You'd have the opening shot, and then you go to the interior shots. It's exactly the same. You'll have the opening shot to show you the profile of the bike. So what I'm going to do now is I'll take a shot um, as it is, kind of a three quarter view. Then I'll do a completely side on um, profile shot. And then I'll probably do a front end shot. And then also a shot from behind me looking this way. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is uh, fit the 100 to 400 and then get on it. So catch in a bit. Okay, so as you can see, we have the 100 to 400 on there. I'll take you uh, on a little tour about it. I'm not going to do a lens review on it, but as you can see, 100 to 400. Um, on here, you've got smooth and tight. Um, what that is is, as the as you zoom, the barrel goes out like this. I'm pretty sure the Sony version does this. Um, and then um, this basically is how much, how, how smooth or tight it goes in or out. 
Now, I like to have it tight, but it can be a pain in the bum to, to make that keep going in and out, basically, when it's tight. But then if you have it loose, it just falls down on its own, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, and then for this, what we've got is the adapter, because the R5 is the new uh, RF mounts, and this is the older EF mount. Now, this particular one has got a ND filter slider built in within this, which is mega if you're doing video. You don't really need it for stills. You could use it for flash photography, but that's, that's another video. Um, so you don't have to use high speed sync. Um, but this ND filter is so, there's no resistance. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a pain in the ass used it a couple of times and knocked it and he didn't even know I was knocking it. But other than that, it's quality, quality bit of kit. Um, and then you've got the different uh, stabilizations on here. Now, if you're not familiar with long lenses, um, you might have noticed um, that I've got the plate on the collar and not on the bottom of the camera, like it, like it was. Reason for that, twofold, two, two main reasons really. Having it here, there's three good reasons to be fair actually. Having it here, you're not putting stress on the camera mount as if it was here and all of the weight would be along here. Better center of gravity, um, which means when it's on here, it's a lot more stable. And if you're shooting video, for example, it's not gonna um, bounce. And the third reason, which I thought of um, on a whim and then completely forgot about it is Ba, 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 ba. Third reason, collar. Oh yeah, so basically you can undo this, undo this, and then look, you can put it to um, uh, portrait orientation. Now, let me see if I can center that. Um, this is a good, this is a good hack. I'll have to straighten it up again in a minute. So this is a good hack. Reason why you'd want to do uh, it there instead of using the tripod here oh using the tripod here and doing it that way as you can see here look the center of the tripod is here if you're if you're doing a panorama this camera needs to be dead center if you're shooting from left to right i'll probably do a video about that as well um, if you're doing uh, left to right it needs to be dead centre so that none of the perspective is off and everything lines up properly. If it's off to the centre, it's never going to line up properly. So, top tip, if you can, it's always have, let's see if I can do it, always have camera in the centre. Therefore, it always pivots in the centre. There's another good reason of why at the moment, not that you can see it, but why at the moment I've got a cage on my um let's turn you around where well, i've got the cage on my sony it's because i can put the tripod mount directly in the center of the camera and pivot from the center and not off center and ruining the shot anyway went off on a right tangent there the 100 to 400 canon it's a, it's a sweet lens it's it is four point mm, i can't remember what the aperture is actually uh four and a half to five six I think that's the same as the Sony 100 to 400. And as you know, I've just bought the 200 to 600 uh, because I wanted the longer reach, but the 100 to 400 uh, is potentially a better lens, um, G Master. So anyway, proper tangent there. What I'm gonna do is um, turn it on and take some shots. So join me back there in a second. Okay, so camera's off the tripod. I'm just gonna go through a couple of the settings and why I've done it. So I've got it on F, F5, because obviously the lowest this can go down is um, 4.5, as I said before. And the lens I was using before was the 35mm 1.8, and I was shooting it at 1.8. Now, flash exposure um, is affected by ISO and aperture. Um, and then ambient is affected by ISO and 
shutter speed. So I want to keep the ambient like it was in the previous shots. So I'm going to keep the shutter speed the same. Um, and now I've had to adjust the ISO from 200 to uh, 1600 to account for the stops of light that I'm losing by being at f5 because the lens can't go to f1.8 which is why when you get like 600 mil f4s um, and it's they're worth like 1500 15 grand um, 12 grand whatever the reason is because um, you can go down uh, massive stops and long lengths so there's a lot of research and development has been put into the long lenses um, and a lot of tech a lot of glass which is why they're so expensive anyway another tangent so um, that's the reason why I've changed the settings on here so I'm going to shoot handheld so I've got flexibility and not on the tripod I'm going to shoot low because um, I want to shoot eye level of the bike and I want to shoot so that the triangle part of the frame uh, of the bike is blocking out the blocking out the flash that's in the background so I'm at I'm at 200 mil and I'll just start taking some photos now. So I'll catch you back in a minute. So that pretty much wraps up the shoot. Hope you enjoyed this one. Um, just to summarize then, did a free flash setup <coughs> using the Commander with the R5. Used a 35mm 1.8, the 100 to 400 to get the establishing shots. And then um, changed the ambient and the flash settings depending on what lens we were using. Um, went on a couple of tangents, but um, I hope you learned something from the tangents. Comment below <coughs> if you did, because um, I'll start doing some different videos, uh, different subjects that people want to see. So yeah, as I said, comment below, like, subscribe, please share also. And uh, these pictures will go up on my Instagram, which is here. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this one and I'll uh, catch you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.